Ruard 1 is a dexterity test which is accepted in the industrial field and field of labor as the best test to examine the capacities and functional skills of a person. The test measures the skills of a person divided under five basic notions – reach, grasp, move, position and release. The 19 individual tests are thus ranked so that the use of dexterity gradually increases. The goal of this systematic increase is to determine which skills of the involved person are being influenced. Hereby, the ability of the precise coordination between hands, hand foot and eye hand foot is being charted in the workplace as supplied quality. The goal of test 1 and 2 is to achieve insight in the most elementary form of the basic movements, to reach, grasp and move. In the three following tests, a person is examined selecting and handling overlying objects. In test 3, the objects are pretty big. In test 5, the objects are rather small and sometimes difficult to grasp. This gives us insight in small motoric skills of the tested person. In a working environment, it is sometimes necessary to grasp small objects like chocolates or to handle rivets, big or small. The Ruard test, originally invented in the 60s, is a sequence of 19 different tests. The system is developed in order to have a reliable instrument for work adjustment as well as for labor training in which the functional possibilities of an employee are determined. The performances during a test are isolated data. Within the system, it is impossible to determine the performance in an actual training or working environment due to a countless number of variables. The Ruard test is based on the MTM method. This means method, time and measurement. MTM is a method with which the human laborer can be analyzed in movements which are necessary to perform on the job. Time values are set to the movements. Hereby, the following is taken into account. The type of movement, the environmental conditions in which the movements take place, and the demanded control. This control can be muscular, visual or neutral, but it is usually a combination of the three. We call this the study of movements. It is possible by analyzing tasks to achieve standardized time values for individual planning and task statement. This we call the study of time. The goals of test 6 7 and 8 are to gain insight in handling and positioning objects in which the form of the object determines the difficulty. Because the objects need to be positioned, repositioning of the hands is necessary during the movement. The more complex the symmetry of the object and the point of placement are, the higher the degree of difficulty is. More specifically, in test 8, the degree of difficulty is shown by repositioning during the movement or the placement. The steps of the Ruard 1 system are as following. First, the preparation of the test, second, instructing and the testing itself, and finally, during the test there is the observation and recording of the time. Then follows the elaboration of test results into reporting and graphics. This can be linked to an analyzed task activity or labor function.
The goal of test 9 is to gain insight in placing an object where a minor resistance takes place. In reality, these movements even take place with larger objects and with a high pace. The goal of test 10 is to gain insight in disconnecting objects with a minor resistance. When the resistance is overcome, the hand tends to pop too far. This has to be controlled up to 10 cm, especially with fruit-like picking strawberries with a controlled and dosed force. Because of tests 11, 12 and 13, we gain insight in precisely placing an object on a flat surface. These are the so-called surface placements. In test 12, the discs are a bit larger, which demands even more precision. Test 13 demands fine motoric skills as well. Precise surface placements by hand are still common in the field of labor. Precision and time pressure often demand a lot of concentration. The basic principle of placements by hand is the cycle to reach, grasp, move, position and release. This cycle is also called the pattern of movements. The pattern of movements of the first test is thus chosen so the movements are used in their most elementary form. The movement to position is not yet integrated in the first five tests. From test 1 up till 18 there is an aggravation of one influence factor per test. Test 19 is composed of a large number of influence factors. The goal of the result of the entire test is to connect to the labor or the activity. Evidentially, the intention is to get necessary and objective information concerning the dexterity of a person. Most of the information is obtained by the following aspects a. Observing during the test and b. Registering time and quality.
The goal of test 14 and 15 is to gain insight in turning and twisting with a resistance for hand, wrist and lower arm. We call this the pro and supination motion. In the work environment, we often see this movement. To screw or unscrew something, even in the garden, is a movement that can be very useful. With test 16 we gain insight on how a person, based on a visual signal, takes a single decision and then takes action. Here we see an employee test an object to verify whether it has been sufficiently composed for further processing. Here, the goal is to gain insight on the coordination between hands, eyes and the foot during the precise placement of the hands. In a working environment, this is a common action. Test 18 analyzes the cooperation between and coordination of the left and right hands. Also pressing the objects together in a correct manner is of great importance. This test is composed by combining most of the above influence factors in a longer cycle and under different circumstances. For example, without practicing in advance and with different combinations, the basic movements are to be used. The layout of the test situation is already quite similar to those in a real organized working environment. This test can show how a simple piece of equipment is composed using screws and bolts. Also, this test provides insight in following instructions and uniformity of movement patterns during the longer cycle. After taking the integrated test, the analysis of the information begins. This part consists of two parts. One, the making of a dexterity profile and two, a written report. The goal of this written report is eventually an adaptation to offer to work or activities of a person and offering training activities to develop the dexterity of a person.